I started WikiLeaks to, to solve a very interesting problem to me, um, which was to know the fate of man, to know the fate of mankind, insofar as uh, that development of man is revealed by the development of his in institutions and how they actually behave in practice internally. And the, the great uh, political struggle of mankind, insofar as it's been rational, and we all know politics is largely irrational, but the irrational part, I feel, is sort of random. And the rational part is based upon what we know, what we know about ourselves, what we know about each other, and what we know about how uh, human resources are distributed and how human institutions behave and what sort of internal and external rules uh, we engage in. So that's the purpose of WikiLeaks, to try and understand mankind. And then from that, we can perhaps uh, produce a better or more realistically put, less worse uh, human civilization. But that's changing. Uh, mankind, in some sense, just having a small glimmer of understanding about how it is progressing uh, through the world, I think is now almost completely eliminated. And not in the way that I expected. We actually have access to much more knowledge about how we work than we ever did before. But it's been, it's been eliminated through the, the speed of informational processing and therefore the speed of the change of knowledge. Uh, and that's going to, that is rapidly moving into, um, out of, well, that algorithmic processing of knowledge is moving into uh, artificial intelligence. And why artificial intelligence is just another kind of algorithm, I think the scale changes that have occurred in the last seven years are significant enough to classify it as a qualitative change. And that qualitative change means a serious, in my view, very serious threat to the stability of human civilizations, not that they should be too stable, uh, and the ability for human beings uh, to organize their fate in an in, in intelligent manner. So I think you guys in both these two dimensions uh, are able to do something. September 20th, 2018 was the last time the world ever heard from Julian Assange as he was doing a live feed and it was abruptly ended after he said this. Instead of things, there's research prototypes now, which I assume are being used by uh, intelligence agencies, of very small electronic circuits uh, that you can just put in paper or put and paint or on the on the walls uh, that are, pa are powered by the GSM stations. And they, they operate as the GSM radio wave passes through them. That gives them en enough power for a very small amount of time to do things. So obviously that tendency is going to continue. It's not the, like the internet of things. It's, it's uh, if you like, uh, intelligent evil dust uh, scattered everywhere like, like confetti in everything. So I think it's increasingly hard for human beings to work out how to deal with that. Now, I have not been very active for a couple years since I had a Facebook page, which was called The True Source, and they deleted my account because there was too much truthful information there leading people to God, and they gave it to a, another uh, individual that pushes a Hinduistic religion. And then also uh, on YouTube, I was John919, and I had 28,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I had 38,000 on Facebook, and my subscribers went from like uh, 100 to, you know, up into the tens of thousands in a matter of months. And I was growing fast, and they didn't like what I was talking about in regards to the what transpired in 2020. So down those sites went. But there are people that copied my videos and uploaded them. 
And I'll, I'll go to one right now. Oh, that I want to thank Julian Assange for giving me that hashtag because nobody else is using it. Intelligent Evil Dust. That'll be a hashtag in this video and you can use it if you'd like. Now, times and dates are very important to prove uh, things that you have said. And when we look at today, 2023, so we're going to go back to 2018. Uh, I found this old video somebody had downloaded from my YouTube channel, John919. And I searched Evil Dust John919 and I found this video. And a guy named Urban Prepper uploaded it. It's uh, Julian Assange's last words. So we're going to go to his site real quick because he not only copied the video, he copied my description of the video. So we're going to go here real quick. And as you can see, this was uploaded on September 27th, 2018 on his page. And I wanted to show you some of the other videos that I had uh, where we talked about removing aluminum from your body uh, over here. Where I did a video on AI nanotechnology working together 2018. Uh, 5G AI nanobots uh, in food, in meds. And it's just, you can research that for yourself and you're going to find out that this nanotechnology is in your food, it's in meds, it's in the air. I just noticed something as I was leaving. he just got 77 likes. And that re reminded me of a video I did a way back when and I uploaded it onto a channel that I have on YouTube called The Truth About God. As God is pouring out His Holy Spirit right now Throughout this world, many people are seeking the truth about God. And the thing is, you have to understand that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why if you search, seek the truth daily, then you will find a, a web page I built. But if you search truth about God, dream about 77, I had this extremely vivid dream. It's the only video I've ever done about a dream I had. And to make the long of it short, just read Psalms 77. It's the only book in the Bible that has 77 chapters. And then for the answer to Psalm 77, read Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, and you will get your answer. And now we're going to go to the video that I uploaded in September of 2018. From here on forward, as today is December 22nd, 2023, everything you hear from here on out is going to be from September 2018. Seek the truth daily. I want you to pay attention in this video of the last few minutes of Julian Assange's live feed that was cut off where he talks about an intelligent evil dust. And what I'm going to do is at the end of this video, I'm going to put information of how you can deal with this intelligent evil dust. Hello, this is John, and we're going to play this last four minutes of Julian Assange with his last communications before his communications feed was cut while broadcasting from an embassy in London where it just seems to cut out. And before we go there, I'd like you like to take a look at a few uploads that I did a while back as you listen to what he's talking about here in regards to AI and evil dust particles flying around in the air. These are some videos I did three months ago, AI and nanotechnology working together. Okay, and also 5G AI, nanobots, nanofood, nanomeds, chemtrails equal new world order. These are two videos that I put up and you can find those by simply searching AI and nanotechnology working together in chemtrails. Now also, I don't know if you've ever heard of Funvax or the VMAT2 gene. I did a video on it two years ago. And we're going to take a look at that after we hear Julian Assange speak. But this was actually uploaded seven years ago in regards to what was found and leaked from the Pentagon from the Department of Defense. Now, I'll put links to all the videos I did in regards to what Julian Assange is about to talk about here 
and his vid and his video feed just cuts out. So let's listen to Julian Assange and what he has to say, and listen very carefully. Measurements, we are emanating constantly, and so if you click those together, you can effectively triangulate someone's uh, activities and behaviour. And I don't think by chopping out uh, many of them or adding uh, kind of chaff uh, cover that you can make that much make that much of a difference and increasingly increasingly it's less um, and the, in terms of the internet of things there's research prototypes now which i assume are being used by uh, intelligence agencies of very small electronic circuits uh, that you can just put in paper or put and paint on the on the walls uh, that are, pa are powered by the GSM stations, and they they operate as the GSM radio wave passes through them. It gives them enough power for a very small amount of time to do things. So obviously that tendency is going to continue. It's not the, like the Internet of Things. It's it's uh, if you like uh, intelligent evil dust. Uh, scattered everywhere like like confetti in everything so I think it's increasingly hard for human beings to work out how to deal with that and and the only way I the only way I can see is that as that we've got to securitize this problem computer security industry is is you know it's been engaged in outrageous securitization for a very long period of time hyping up threats etc I get how the game is played uh, it needs to be securitized in a different way. We need to securitize the, by securitize I mean you turn something into a threat and thereby change behavior or get economic gain from it. Um, so we need to securitize the threat to elites by these developments. The, the people who run these companies, it's a threat to them. It's a, it's, a, it's a threat to the most powerful people in society. And to eliminate the notion that there's a place that powerful people can hide from, or skilled people can hide from this phenomenon. Uh, and that's the way to get uh, all those people who have an ability to make a difference, to make a difference. Okay, we're gonna play that again. Did you hear it when he said, intelligent evil dust and if you're still watching this video and you don't believe in chemtrails, we're going to go to the head director of the CIA, John Brennan, when he was holding that position and when he's speaking at the Council on Foreign, Foreign Relations, and he admits to upper aerosol injection. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI. A method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. Okay, this was from three years ago, and what our old buddy John Brennan didn't point out is that this is nanoparticles of aluminum and barium, and while they will partially block out the sun's ultraviolet rays on a temporary basis, they will permanently fall down to the ground in these aluminum and barium heavy metals. Not only a nanoparticle will we be, be breathing in, but they will also absorb into the ground soil and the water and the snowfall that will come down and it will perma permanently be on the ground causing global warming because the earth will be embedded with all these nanoparticles of aluminum. So what he's basically saying here is it'll help to cool down the planet and he's just lying through his teeth because what this does these chemtrails, you can call them upper aerosol injections if you'd like, but they are chemtrails and they will cause this planet to warm up over a period of time rather than cool down. But now with 5G in the game and 
AI advanced as far as it has in a nano aspect with nanotechnology, 5G nanotechnology, AI working together and upper atmospheric injections for you to breathe in. Intelligent evil dust uh, scattered everywhere like, like confetti in everything. So I think it's increasingly hard for human beings to work out how to deal with that. Now about a year ago I did a video showing people how to deal with that. That intelligent evil dust that's floating in the air and it's called removing, removing aluminum from your body. Why do they want aluminum in the human body? I'll put a link to that down below in this video also. But right now we're going to go take a listen to what came out of the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, and was leaked seven years ago. Excuse me, on the left over here, we have individuals who are religious fun fundamentalists, religious fanatics, and this is the expression, uh, RT-PCR, real-time PCR uh, expression of the VMAT2 gene. Over here, we have individuals, in so, so, so let, let me complete. So over here, we have uh, individuals who are not particularly uh, fundamentalist, not particularly religious, and you can see there's a, a much reduced uh, expression of, of this particular gene, the, the VMAT2 uh, gene. Uh, another evidence that, that supports our, our hypothesis for the development of, of, of this um, approach. Uh, so what you, what you see here is by, by, by spreading this virus, we're going to eliminate individuals from donning on a bomb vest and going into a market and blowing up the market. So our, our hypothesis is that these are fanatical people, uh, that they have overexpression of the VMAT2 gene and that by vaccinating them against this, we'll eliminate this behavior. Uh, so we have some, some very, very uh, remarkable data in this next slide. Uh, here we have two uh, brain scans. These are fMRIs. Uh, these are two different individuals with different levels of expression of VMAT2. Uh, on top uh, is an individual who's a religious fanatic and individual, and we've repeated this numerous times, that, that uh, has uh, high levels of VMAT2. Now, um, this individual down here who had low levels of the VMAT2 gene, this individual would uh, self-describe as, as, as not particularly religious in, in each case. Uh, these individuals were, were read a religious text. Uh, this individual uh, light lit up um, the, the right middle frontal gyrus uh, shown here. And uh, that's a part of the brain that's associated with theory of mind. Uh, it's a part of the brain that, that uh, has to do with intents and, and beliefs and, and desires. Uh, in contrast, in marked contrast, here's an individual who would uh, not particularly uh, self-describe as, as religious. And when they're read a religious text, <clears throat> what you see is that this part of the brain called the anterior insula lights up. This is a part of the brain that's associated with, with disgust or displeasure on hearing something. Uh, so you're suggesting I take a CT scan with me when I'm uh, evaluating people to determine whether I put a bullet in their head? So, so um, the, the data that I'm presenting here uh, supports uh, the, the concept that, that we're proposing. Uh, and I think that uh, we would not propose to do uh, CT scans or fMRIs on, on individuals out in the hinterlands of, of Afghanistan. The virus would immunize against this VMAT2 gene, and that would, would have the effect that you see here, which is it's essentially to turn a fanatic into a, a, a normal person. And we think that will have major effects in the Middle East. How would you suggest that this is going to be dispersed in aerosol? Well, so, so the, the present uh, plan and the tests that we've done so far um, have used uh, uh, respiratory viruses, uh, such as flu or, or uh, rhinoviruses. And uh, we believe that that's a satisfactory way to get the exposure of the largest uh, part of the population. Most of us, of course, have, ha have been exposed to both of those viruses. And, and we're, we're quite confident that, that this will be a, a, a very successful uh, approach. This is fascinating. What's the name of this proposal? 
Yeah, so, so the name of this project is FunVax, which is the vaccine for religious fundamentalism. And you have a proposal already? The proposal uh, has just been submitted, and I think that the data that I have shown you today would, would support uh, the, the development of, of this project, and we think it has great promise. There it goes. Look at it. That's amazing. Oh, man. Now, we can see how the aluminum, when it flares up, it just sparks in many different areas around this uh, piece of aluminum foil, much as our bodies might do if we were hit with a microwave weapon while we have aluminum within our system. Now, I'd like to show you a very interesting thing I found in the Bible in regards to sores that will come upon man. I want you to pay close attention to this word, noisome. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now, this did not happen to the people that are in Jesus Christ, who are sealed with the seal of God and are serving and worshiping and doing the will of God. So our sanctuary is in Jesus Christ. And that is the best way to save yourself against aluminum, aluminum tox, tox, uh, toxicity. <laughs> it's the best way to save yourself from aluminum toxicity. So now let's go and take a look at what noisome is. Now, if we are hit with a microwave weapon while we have aluminum pockets within our body, we would spark and it would burn us and there would be sores there. And also, noisome, this word means having, having an extremely offensive smell. The smell of burning flesh is extremely, is an extreme offensive smell. You may be asking me, how do I know that those sealed by God will not be affected by microwave weapons or aluminum toxicity? I can show you in the Bible quite a few references to where those that were serving God and doing his will were spared. In Daniel, we find that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into a fiery furnace. And in there, walking with them was a fourth person. This was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they were not burnt, nor did they smell of fire. And let me take you to that verse where it reveals this. As we read here in Daniel 3, 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Amen. Now let's move on to, uh, well, then you have Daniel and the lion's den. When Daniel was thrown into lion's den with lions that had not been fed for a few days, and he came out the next morning unscathed. But I want to take you to what happened to the Apostle Paul and about a poison that entered his system that would kill any normal man. As we read here in Acts 28, 5, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom through though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. This is the most venomous snake on this island and it did not give Paul any ill feeling whatsoever. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said, that he was a god. Paul was not a god, but he was sealed by God, 
and protected by God. And he is in the sanctuary, and the sanctuary is Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ himself is also the third temple that was not built by the hands of man. Now, this reveals to me those hit with microwaves who have aluminum in their body and do spark and flame up in certain areas around their body will not die, but the pain will be so great that they would want to die. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Now this is a vision John had, and this is Revelations 9.2. Now understand John had never seen an airplane, so an airplane or a flying device that would would be weaponized with microwave weapons, John seeing this might think it's some kind of a creature that he's never seen before. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. That means there's going to be men on the earth when this is happening that are sealed by God, serving God, believing and trusting fully in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. It's a, when a scorpion strikes an individual, it is a shearing, burning pain. Understand that. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them now for those that are still with me grace be with you and i just want to let you know that i have built this site for you it's truthaboutgod.net and you can come here and listen to the very first teaching of jesus christ it's called the sermon on the mount but one thing i'd want you to listen to and i'm going to put it in the description below is it's john 17 where Jesus Christ himself said a prayer for you that holds on to this very day. And if you come to truthaboutgod.net, you will find every single book of the Bible on this site and understand that the written word of God is preserved by God unto this very day. And it is food for the spirit. It is food for your soul. When Jesus Christ told Peter to feed his sheep, he meant to feed them spiritual food of the truth about God. And back in that day, there was no New Testament. And it was written by all these men, the apostles, that were filled with the Holy Spirit. We walk together in the same spirit as we are one in the body of the church. And we look out for one another and we serve one another. And we learn from one another as we as the Lord our God gives unto us let us freely give to one another the truth it's important to understand that there is no coincidence with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you are here and listening to this end of this video for a reason and as you read scripture that will confirm that in your heart that with God Nothing is by coincidence, for all things move forward to achieve the will of our Heavenly Father. And this will come into being and play out according to His will. Now I'll put John chapter 17 down in the description. You can come here and read it for yourself. These words spake Jesus and lifted up His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify Thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. It's important that we understand the word of God. If you do not keep in the word of God and pray to God for understanding, and he will bring that understanding to you. 
Um, also, look at Psalm 77. And after you have listened to Psalm 77, then go to Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 7, to receive the understanding of what Psalms 77 said. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you always.